stopped. Hi, hello. Uh, a video uh, I've just put together shows you uh, if you have a problem with one of your servos in, in your model aircraft, it's not necessarily the servo, it might be the radio. So I'm just going to run you through some checks you can do and show you how to resolve certain issues you might get with your, your servo or your radio. Uh, now the reason I actually made this uh, video was because I actually sent my radio off to be checked. To, I sent it to Spectrum. I've got a, it was a spec, uh, Spectrum radio, which I'm not using anymore, but it's a very good example of uh, what you can do. Uh, for yourself. Now I had this, as I said, I sent it to Spectrum to get it checked because I bought it second hand. Right, and there's no way in this world I'm going to send a model up with an unproven radio. So it just seemed sense to me to pay a few pounds and get them to check it over. And that's, yeah, yeah, all good, all good. Sent it back, there's a problem. Well, I'm going to show you how to discover what the problem is and how to resolve it. So, enjoy. Hi, well, I'm going to show you something here. Um, very interesting. Now, the reason it's making a noise is because it's upside down and it wants to correct itself. Um, you may remember I, sh I showed you this in the hangar chat where the rudder had seized and I had to replace a servo. And uh, I was moving the rudder and I was getting that much movement so I play it around and we get this full movement it's the radio so I'll turn this the right way up hopefully the noise will stop so that tells me it's the radio now, although the servo was frozen and it's been replaced, we now have a two-pronged problem. And this is something that doesn't happen that often, which makes it very, very interesting. But what, what it makes it more interesting is, I had this in the post yesterday because I sent it off to be checked and serviced. Follow me. Right. So, got rid of the noise, come into the kitchen for a bit of sanity, um, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Now, I've got my radio here, I'll scroll through the menu to um, monitor, it's called the monitor software, and it tells you how much movement you've got on your sticks. Now, look at this, this is quite interesting, okay? Now, I'm hoping you can see this okay. Now, if I move uh, the rudder, can you see that just there it's showing full movement now why do you think that could be well that tells me that it's very probably this pot this is a pot or a potentiometer and inside there is a like a carbon strip okay and I need to clean that so I'm going to clean it stick it back on there and see what happens but that means I've got to take all this apart and I'll take you through that but I might have to cut the video to bits you, you know so you just don't see the whole bloody screws coming out and all that rubbish or I, I might do it and speed it up I don't know let's wait and see oh, the excitement. okay now this is the potentiometer and as you can see it's enshrouded like a hood there this is easy to get to um, so what I'm going to do 
I'm just going to get one of my little tools there and what you do with these you just very very gently prise back those little tongs there okay ever so ever so gently because you've got to push them back in you don't want to break them whatever you do don't break them okay and there you go just push that back and that pops out like that and you'll see this nylon ring there so what you do uh, I should have some here just one second there we go I knew we had some the Americans call these Q-tips I have absolutely no idea why um, these are cotton buds so you spray a bit on the inside of there we go now this is uh, IPA Servosol uh, it's isoprenol alcohol yeah um, I haven't got any switch cleaner which is probably actually better and this just cleans everything up because you have a build up of carbon see that, that dirt on there you get build up of carbon okay and you've got to get them clean um, this is the thing with electronics and especially if you're doing soldering you need to get everything absolutely as clean as you can uh, even if it's solid state so whoop, there you go and that'll probably be enough and then it's just the reversal of what you've already done to put it back together again but just be careful of these these little tongs here if they snap then you well you you tate it really isn't you? and that's what I've got to do with this one but because that's enclosed I'm going to be absolutely very very careful about it so I thought I'd show you with that one because I might as well do this one while I've got it out uh, this potentiometer or as I would like to say a pot is actually for the throttle so it's not going to hurt anything for me to do that okay let's get rid of the excess there there you go all right so i'm going to fiddle about with that one and just do exactly what i did there except that one's a bit more fiddly because it's got that that hood over it you see that it's sort of semi-enclosed so i'm not going to do that on a camera it's just going to take too long you're going to get bored okay I managed to do that okay I just did exactly what I did there but it was just a lot more fiddly and I didn't really want to waste your time so um, putting this back together is reversal what I did the first time so I'm going to keep this running and I'm just going to fast forward it okay let's turn it on okay everything's sort of turned back on there let's have a look at the uh, setup list monitor right what we got so on the rudder yeah so on the rudder there see that that's showing okay so I'm just going through the rest of it now if these all move smoothly you haven't got much of a problem if they're a bit jittery you got a problem okay right so Let's go and try that out on the model. Okay, ladies and gents, let's uh, turn the radio on, connect the battery, 
let it initialize okay there you go right let's see what happens look at that full movement so another problem solved there you go hope you learned something from that so what have we learned well if you're having a problem uh, so your ailerons or your rudder or your elevator it's not necessarily the servo it can be the servo and the radio which is in this case was true I had to replace the servo and I had to repair the radio but this investigation gives you a heads up because what you do is the process basically is um, swap one of your other servos for the defective one in this case the rudder so I took out the the, the rudder connection uh, servo connection uh, and put it into an elevator or you can take the elevator out and put the the rudder uh, connection into the elevator and just check that that servo is actually moving if the servo is moving then the servo is okay it's not the servo so now you turn to the radio okay and obviously it's a complicated bit of kit you don't know what's the matter with it but it's only by time and experience and, and talking to other people that you learn that you can take the potentiometer out of the gimbal or take the gimbal out and then look at the potentiometer clean that and it cures the problem save you sending it off and, and spending lots of money or buying a, a brand new radio because you know your old one just doesn't do what you you need to do you don't know how to fix it it, it cost me nothing nothing you know i already had the alcoholic spray so it cost me nothing except my time so i've retrieved my radio and it, and it works perfectly fine so there's a top tip if something's not working properly uh, then just try that method swap leads over on your servo make sure your servos either functioning or not functioning if it's functioning go on to your radio if it's not functioning then it's, it's the servo but swap over servo leads and see what happens okay now it's all come back to pre-flight checks and it's so important in the in the model radio model world radio control model world, i should say um do your pre-flight checks so important you know check everything before you leave the house because you know you, you, your bench is there you can you can correct it there and then and all, all your tools are there so make sure everything before you work before you leave the house and check again at the field okay because anything could happen between getting from your house to the field and it's good practice and it demonstrates to other flyers that you you're trustworthy and they have confidence in you so there's another good reason to your pre-flights before uh, you take off on the field so i hope you've gained something from that uh it's not one of my best videos i admit but hey you know it's better than nothing so there you go that's what you do and uh, I hope that uh, for some people that will uh, give you a clue and maybe get you flying. Save you a lot of money too. Bye. Now that's